and welcome to our global market forecast brought to you by Options 21. There are a number of global macroeconomic or geopolitical factors driving markets at the present time. Um, probably the most important three are China with an increased uh, industrial production number coming out midweek which is very positive for the Chinese market. North Korea testing a short-range missile which is I believe setting the scene for the next round of talks with the United States and uh, Brexit which is fading not into the distance but has been delayed and has absolutely no influence at this point over the markets. Let's first of all tackle the United States looking at the S&P 500 in previous um, roundups of for forecasts we have made note that this market from a technical perspective is presenting what is a broad-based um, accumulation pattern in the form of a inverted head and shoulders pattern and we suggested that uh, it's in a strong extension has broken out of its neckline uh, and that broad-based pattern are usually broad-based patterns are normally bases for very large extensions into the future coming down into a I suppose a closer picture in the past week what we can note on the S&P 500 is the market has moved at a rate of change of price since late March and it is now overextended above its moving average which is a 20 period exponential moving average. If I looked at that particular move uh, in conjunction with the previous move and that was the extension from early March to uh, mid-March and we did an extension on that particular range I can tell you that we are reaching almost exactly 100% of that extension which predisposes the market to start its pullback. Markets usually do extensions and pullbacks, extensions and pullbacks. It's had a large extension so from the perspective of a trader it would be very risky to go long the market at the moment. From the perspective of a investor this is where you do adjust, adjustments, slight adjustments to your portfolio and any cash that you have within your account after this pullback is complete or as it's complete uh, you would start to re-add that um, you know that spare cash the lazy cash sitting in the account and take advantage of what will be or should be the next extension within the market. What tells us this market is an ongoing extension uh, into you know the weeks and months ahead are the internal numbers which actually drive the market. The two most important measures of that internal, uh, you know, the internal drivers are the advancing and declining stocks and the uh, new highs and new lows figures. In the context of advancing and declining stocks I probably pay most attention to those numbers. In the last three weeks we'd ha we have had uh, 287 advancing within the S&P 500, 186 declining, 293 advancing last week, 180 declining and this week it's backed off to 266 advancing, um, 208 declining. Now that back off is not unusual because the market is starting to um, look, it appears technically speaking it's putting in a top and that's exactly what happens at the top, advancing and declining numbers back off and then they start to move again. Most importantly, the, numer the numeric value is interesting but what I find is the most important is the, the volume of the numbers. So how much volume has been generated by these numbers? And I can tell you that the advancing volume of, uh, you know, of those uh, advancing stocks are 24% above the declining volume of the declining stocks. And that is a very bullish picture. If I go back to last week, it was actually 68% uh, above. So we're in the midst of a potential pullback. That's all these numbers tell me. That's probably what's happening right now and um, we'll have that confirmed within the last week. There are other volume numbers I look at and that's generally um, institutional trading volumes and they're, they're quite steady but I think the most infor informative is the advancing and declining information and um, that does indicate a you know signal of strength but a market that appears to be or has the potential to have topped out um, in, 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 the, in, in the next days or weeks ahead and that pullback we're not talking about a corrective phase here we're just talking about a pullback 
in an ongoing extending market. One of the measurements that I like to get a feel of in a market that's going up is are there any indications of fear within the market which would be institutions purchasing put options to hedge portfolios and I've put up the VIX which is known as the fear index and that's in a steady decline which has no upward movement therefore there's no um, you know major hedging activity occurring and I'd have to conclude that um, it all indicates, even if we have a pullback, the ongoing upward move within the S&P 500. OK, let me go across to Europe and have a look at EWU, which is Exchange Traded Fund, representing the United Kingdom, uh, traded on NICE. And as I pointed out last week, it's also broken trend, uh, large, ex large accumulation phase over many months, which is the... Uh, launch pad for an extension in the market which is occurring and the market has confirmed the previous swing low uh, which is a confirmation of trend to the upside. Let's have a look at another European index it's EWG which represents uh, Germany, Central Europe. It also has broken trend, inverted head and shoulders pattern. In the past week has done a very large move to the upside and once again I'd, I'd uh, be cautioning uh, investors that um, when markets extend way above their trend above their trend line or above their moving average they have a high propensity to revert back to that average markets don't move in straight lines to the upside therefore this is not a time to be adding to your portfolios or buying long uh, you know to speculate on continued upward move it's a time to be um, out of the markets long potentially going short wait for the opportunity for the pullback to add to your portfolio if you're exposing yourself to uh, German stocks or even trading EWG. Just uh, I just put up the actual DAX. This is the actual DAX index and uh, also it has had, had this really large extension in the last week which continues the story from last week about markets expanding and uh, it also is prone to having a pullback due to the the um, you know the size of that extension in the past week. Just jumping uh, back across the pond to um, to North America once again, looking at the Canadian exchange traded fund EWC. It also it's a very familiar pattern: inverted head and shoulders, large extension, and a break above its neckline, which is continuing to expand North American markets. Let's come down to Asia Pacific. First of all, uh, FXI is an exchange traded fund traded on NICE, representing the I think it's the top 25 capitalized stocks in the Chinese market. Uh, I need to probably contract this picture a little bit to give you a sense of where it's come from and where it's going. It represents a large double bottom pattern. Again, it's over a large period of time, which is usually the base for large extensions. And that's exactly what this market's doing. Um, remember, the Chinese are, have put in these uh, above forecast industrial production figures only uh, Wednesday of this week, and that is, uh, you know, the fundamental driver, uh, and, and, and most likely the reason for the continuing upward drive of Chinese markets. Uh, it doesn't matter whether we look at FXI through an exchange traded fund or we come across to the actual Shanghai Composite. Uh, Shanghai Composite showing some explosive uh, movements, uh, major highs, major lows, and uh, for commodity uh, dependent economies like Canada and Australia, for example, uh, we'll find that our commodity markets, especially our metals and mining industries, are going along for the ride because they're the primary or you know some of the primary markets for Chinese industrial production. They need our our commodities in Australia so um, you know this is all very positive for Asia Pacific in particular uh, in particular uh, Australia uh, Canada and uh, South America where a lot of the iron ore is coming out of okay the uh, the next uh, index chart I'll review is the uh, EWA it's been in a sidewoods pattern called a time correction 
has broken out of that sideways pattern above its neckline and continuing to do a series of higher highs and higher lows. Coming across to the actual Australian index traded in Australia, the code's XJO, it's ASX uh, S&P 200. Uh, it did a very large pattern, you know, many months ago. Uh, market broke trend and has just uh, been doing a series of higher highs and higher lows. Uh, no negativity except, I suppose, the last two days. It's starting to indicate that there's uh, a short-term top coming in. Um, that could develop into something else, but at this point, it's still an ongoing market with a large base. And remember, the Australian market is supported by China. China's positive, Australia's positive, uh, and that flows into many areas or sub-industries within the Australian market. Just as a quick example of, uh, of a sub-industry within the Australian market, so the sector would be materials, the industry would be metals and mining. And I'm just putting up the Australian metals and mining chart, which has really had this major rally. Uh, it's all very highly correlated with the Chinese chart. Um, not exactly, but a series of major moves, and that's reflecting in stocks such as BHP, which is traded globally on uh, a lot of exchanges, not just Australia, it's traded on uh, London and also uh, in the States. Uh, things like Rio, uh, this local uh, iron ore stock such as FMG, Fortescue, some explosive moves to the upside, like 100% increases in share prices, and uh, that uh, probably will continue as long as the Chinese are increasing the demand for those products. Okay, that's it for today's forecast. If you want to contact me, you may do so. Um, my email address is paul at options21.com.au. That's paul at options2121 is numeric.com.au. Happy to talk to you anytime. Thank you.